Hey there fellow data enthusiast, welcome back to my channel where we dive into the wild world of data engineering. Today I've got a story for you, one that's full of struggles, discoveries and ultimately victory. It's the story of how I took an EMR Spark job that used to run for 6 hours and slashed it down to 1 hour. Yes, you heard that right, just 1 hour. Let me take you on a journey through the chaos, the sleepless nights and the breakthrough moments. And believe me, it's something you don't want to miss. So here's the situation. We had a massive data processing job about terabytes of data to churn through every day. And what was supposed to be a smooth ride turned into a Imagine this, you're running your Spark jobs, expecting them to finish in a couple of hours, but they just keep going. It keep us deepest, deepest, point and going until six hours pass. Not good, right? At first I thought, no big deal. Maybe we just need to add more resources, throw money at the problem, right? So I tried bumping up resources, added more CPU, more memory, still nothing. The jobs just weren't speeding up. So I moved on to analyzing the job logs, looking at CPU utilization, memory usage, thread dumps, JVM metrics, you name it. I even checked for things like data skew, partition sizes, and shuffle operations. I was trying everything. The jobs would run, but they would still hit that six hour mark. Honestly, I was exhausted mentally and physically. It felt like I was running in circles, throwing more and more at the problem, but getting nowhere. But then, in one of those late night log reviews, I noticed something strange. The issue wasn't with processing the data, it was writing the data to S3. Yep, S3 was the bottleneck. Specifically, it was the way Hadoop's file committer was interacting with S3. This was the aha moment. After all that digging, the root cause finally made sense. The file committer was not optimized for large-scale data writing in S3, especially with the default settings. So we needed a smarter solution. Here's where things got interesting. I realized that the problem lay in the way we were using file output committers to write data to S3. Let's break down how each of these committers work and why they matter. First, let's talk about file output committer v1. This was the default committer in Hadoop for a long time. Here's how it works. v1 writes output data to a temporary directory during the job's execution. Once the task is completed, the data is moved from this temp location to the final destination. This commit operation happens at the end and it works fine for smaller jobs. But for large data sets like the Hira beat we are dealing with, the amount of time it takes to commit becomes a major bottleneck. V1 is best used for smaller data sets or local HDFS writes where the final commit doesn't cause a lot of overhead. But when you're writing to S3, this process becomes painfully slow. That's because S3 isn't a traditional file system. It doesn't handle atomic renames like HDFS. Next, I looked into file output committer V2. V2 was introduced to address some of these pain points by committing files in parallel, reducing the delay compared to V1. The idea is that it reduces the number of round trips between the compute nodes and the storage location by committing in parallel instead of one by one. This makes it faster than V1 for larger workloads. But even then, when writing huge amounts of data to object storage like S3, there was still a significant bottleneck. V2 performs better than V1 for large jobs and is still useful for HDFS or other file systems that support atomic commits. But when you're dealing with S3, which isn't optimized for this kind of committing process, you're still hitting performance issues because it still has the rename and move operations overhead and relay on HDFS file system style. Then I discovered the S3A magic committer. This is where things really started to get exciting. S3A magic committer fundamentally changes how files are written to S3. Unlike v1 and v2 which rely on temporary directories and renaming, the S3A committer uses a staging approach where files are first written to a magic directory and upon task completion they're moved directly into S3 without needing to rename files. This approach avoids the expensive rename operations using native S3A protocols like multi-part upload and improve the performance. It's designed specifically for object stores like S3 where renames are inefficient. By eliminating these unnecessary operations, the S3A magic committer drastically speeds up writes, especially for large data sets. By switching to the S3A magic committer, I drastically improved the speed of writing to S3. This alone shaved off hours from my job runtime and made the whole process much faster. 
There are actually different types of S3A committers available, each optimized for different workloads. Magic committer, optimized for large-scale writes, avoiding renames. Partitioned committer, breaks data into chunks and commits independently. Directory committer commits entire directories at once suitable for smaller workloads. More details can find in screenshot above. Instead of just adding more nodes, I shifted to using Graviton3 and NVMe-based instances. Why? Because these instances are optimized for both cost and performance. Graviton3 gives you better throughput with a much lower price tag and NVMe-based storage cuts down the I.O. bottlenecks when dealing with heavy data loads. And that's how I took an underperforming Spark job from 6 hours to 1 hour. It was a journey full of trial and error, late night struggles, and finally, victory. The key takeaway here? Never give up. Data engineering is all about problem solving. And when you hit that breakthrough moment, it makes all the hard work worth it. So if you're dealing with slow jobs or bottlenecks, don't just throw resources at the problem. Dig deep, look at your instance types, your storage and your committer logic. You might just find the hidden bottleneck that's slowing everything down. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more data engineering stories and tips. And if you have any questions about tuning Spark jobs or anything else, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to help you out. Subscribe for more data engineering insights.